Good morning, and welcome to St. Mark's as today we celebrate the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. Our color continues to be green, symbolizing a new life in Christ. I want to share a thank you to all who helped with God's work, our hands, Sunday, which was last week. Over 21 hygiene kits were assembled for Shepherd of the Streets Relay Ministries, and we thank you for your assistance in putting those kits together. A reminder that next Sunday, September the 24th at 2 p.m., is our annual pet blessing here at St. Mark's. The pet blessing was originally scheduled for October the 1st, but had to be rescheduled for September the 24th. All pets and pet parents are welcome. Weather permitting, we will gather in our parking lot by the Fellowship Hall entrance. The crop walk is coming. Uh, the annual walk from Williamsport and Williamsport area begins at 1 p.m. Sunday, October 8th, or starting at any location in St. Mark's. Uh, Brenda, I saw you earlier. There she is. She is our crop walk person. If you would like to sponsor someone, if you would like to walk in the crop walk, over there is the person to see. I believe we have two other special announcements to share. Good morning. As all of you know, for the past week, hustling, bustling, working like dogs to get our annual fall sale looking beautiful and inviting to the public. After all of that took place, and I see many of you here this morning that helped on more than one day, um, we did very, very well at our sale both Friday evening and then yesterday. And the glorious news is even my husband commented on how well the cleanup went. So that's always a, a, a big thing for us is how tired we are when we have the cleanup yet to face. But the even better news is that at a quick counting of cash and coins, our fall sale made a profit of $2,300. And that is an all time high for my tenure as chairperson. Please know that your donations and your hard work and coming out and just being together as church family was wonderful. But it's even more wonderful that we, as a church family, will be able to support Shepherd of the Streets, Sojourner's Truth, Blessing Boxes at New Covenant, American Rescue Workers, and, and the list goes on for a few more in our own community when the need remains so high. So with heartfelt thanks, just thanks a lot, and know that I, for one, love all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. Thank you for organizing the false thing. And to upcoming items, the kits for Luther World Relief are due the first week of October. I put out kits in the end. An of, uh, so you can see what a baby kit, a personal care kit, and a uh, sewing kit look like. All of you that have returned the backpacks, that's great. <clears throat> Next year, I would like to challenge Saint, uh, over at Messiah Lutheran, they did 357 backpacks. Maybe we could beat them next year. That'd be really great. And upcoming on October 15th is our next hosting for Family Promise, so I'll be getting around and everybody for that, where we can help other people in our community. So, thank you very much. And we thank you, Deb, as well. I also call your attention to the many ministries, events, and meetings that will take place this week and beyond. Please uh, consult the calendar as is included in your bulletin today. Do we have any other specific announcements we would like to share? And I would invite you to please stand as you are able as we begin with our brief order for confession.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ is given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
You are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Since they give thanks to God, 
while those who abstain abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be born of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Peter thought 
thought he was being generous with his answer of seven. Remember that the rabbis taught that four was the legal limit. Jesus answers not seven, but seventy-seven. Now Jesus' answer is not to be taken literally, but it is not to stand there with the calculator portion of the phone, keeping track of how many times we offer forgiveness to another. Seven was a biblical number. It had great significance. In ancient Hebrew numerology, three was the number associated with God, and four was the number associated with earth and humanity. Three plus four equals seven. Seven symbolized great harmony. God and creation were one. That is why we number the Ten Commandments as we do. We don't number them five and five, but three and then seven. Commandments 1 to 3 concern love of God. Commandments 4 through 10 concern love of neighbor. God is loved most completely in love of neighbor. Commandments 4 through 10 equals 7. They illustrate complete love, harmony. Any number with seven in it had great significance. To multiply seven by seven had great power. When Jesus says 77, or even as some have suggested, 70 times seven, it meant beyond calculation. God forgives because it is God's nature. God does not put a price or limit on forgiveness. And Jesus taught that if we seek to follow God and be labeled as people of God, our forgiveness of others is to be like God's forgiveness. We're not to keep score. We're not to set legal limits. That doesn't set too well, does it? If we're honest, most of us would probably prefer Peter's answer. I prefer Peter's answer. It's reasonable. It's even generous when you consider the rabbis. Forgiveness is important, but it has to have some kind of limit or it becomes cheap, right? I mean, you just can't go on giving people. It's an affront to your spiritual character. Why well, think what others might say about you? They would label you as some kind of pushover, a whip. Some might even say snowflake. That's probably part of the problem. When we focus on our character, when we focus on what we do, spiritual strength, when we propose that our favorite hymn is How Great I Am, rather than How Great Thou Art, when we utter the false statement, well, I will confess a wrong, I did anything wrong, we might become a little bit too preoccupied with ourselves, and our faith becomes all about what can I do? instead of what God has already done. Our faith is not a focus on our own abilities. Our faith is not to be a byproduct of our own reason and reasoning capabilities. Our faith is trusting in the promises of God. God forgives because it is God's nature to forgive grace. Our forgiveness of others is to be based upon God's forgiveness of us. We forgive because God has forgiven us. Consider the story that Jesus tells today. A servant owes the king 10,000.
thousand talents. A single talent was worth more than 15 years of back wages. The servant couldn't possibly pay this debt all at once, so the servant asks for an extension for time. The king, knowing that the debt is impossible to pay off, forgives the servant the debt. He cancels it. The servant, upon leaving the king, approaches a fellow servant who owes him money. He grabs his fellow servant and says to him, Pay me what you owe. The other servant pleads for mercy, but the first servant will have none of it and throws him into prison. When the king learns that the first servant who has forgiven will not show mercy to a fellow servant, the king throws the first servant into prison. We are to forgive because we have been forgiven. Forgiveness is not based upon our character. Forgiveness is not based upon our whim. Forgiveness is not based upon our emotions. Whenever we hear this good news of forgiveness, how we are to forgive, we inevitably go to the big stuff. What about school shootings? What about murder? Is Hitler in heaven? What about 9-11? Immediately we confuse forgiveness with dismissal of consequences. They are not the same. Dismissal of consequences is not the same as forgiveness. We are to offer forgiveness. At the same time, that does not erase the consequences. If you break my favorite pen and I forgive you, the pen is still open. We must deal with the consequences concerning forgiveness. Remember that there are consequences even to forgiveness. Remember how Jesus ends the story? So my heavenly Father will do to every one of you who does not forgive brother or sister from his heart. When it comes to forgiveness, we are all servants who owe our Lord everything. Try as we might, we can never repay God for the mercy shown to us. No matter what we do, it will never be enough. We are to forgive because God forgives. The forgiveness that we pass on to others is the result of the union we have in Christ. It is a result of the good news that is shared with us at our baptism. It's not because we're so virtuous. It's not because we are moral heroes. It's not because forgiveness is good for our bodies and our blood pressure, as some like to point out. Those things are nice. They're even beneficial. But that's not the reason we are to forgive. We forgive because we ourselves are forgiven sinners. How often, Lord, must I forgive? If we follow Jesus, and if we read the Gospel, I think we already know the answer to the question.
believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and all the needs of our neighbors. We pray for the church. Bless the missions and ministries of diverse congregations, that they uplift the good news of salvation in ways that all may understand. Merciful God, We pray for creation. Send rain to lands experiencing drought, healing to rivers clogged with pollution. Enrich the soil of trees and plants. Protect the crops needed to feed those who hunger. Merciful God, we pray for all who govern. Encourage those in positions of power to lead with empathy, to practice forgiveness, and to care for those who struggle. Merciful God, we pray for our neighbors who face illness of any kind, for those strained financially, for all living with chronic pain, mental illness, the disease of addiction, or otherwise afraid or in harm's way. Protect all who cry out for mercy, especially Liz, Grace, Diane, Vanessa, Gary, Charles, Jerry, Patricia, Richard, Ashton, Lucille, April, Gary, Elsie, Virginia, Susan, Bunny, Judy, Deb, Ezra, Sheila, Kevin, Kathy, Micah, Steve, Linda, Marianne, Mike, Anne. Merciful God, we pray for this congregation. Open our hearts to practice intentional invitation. Help us to forgive each other, practice patience, and choose welcome over judgment. Move us to care for those in our community seeking refuge and safety. Merciful God, we give thanks to the saints who died in faith. Show us how to live faithfully, creatively, and lovingly in your church and world, such as in Hildegard, Abbess of Egypt, whom we commemorate today. Merciful God, remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these in the prayers of our hearts, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join your unending hymn.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever.